Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden. He drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. The Conclave Bible, Data Links. Can you tell a story in a strategy game? Yes, yes you can. People have been doing that since forever with dialogue cinematics and mission briefings. But can you tell a story through a strategy game? Should the gameplay through the map, through the factions involved and at no point have a scripted discussion? Well, one game did. And it did it so well that it puts not only other strategy games to shame, but the narrative of games in general. And that game was Alpha Centauri. The full name would be Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, a game by Brian Reynolds. One of the first games made by Firaxis based on ideas that were bubbling at Microprose since the days of the first Civilization game. As good as those games were, they only had the ability to retell history. A limited version of of history that skewed time, origins, genesis, facts, and well basically everything. That was the game series where Gandhi would often nuke people. And by people I mean everyone. There was no way of telling a new story in this context, no way of exploring concepts, no way of making a game that actually educated the player by presenting them new ideas. To do that, they would need a strategy game that would not have any sort of limits. No historical constraints. And where else could they go but to the stars? Alpha Centauri continues the Civilization series almost directly, a long-standing tradition of the series being a victory condition where you could colonize our closest neighboring solar system. And Alpha Centauri approaches that with a sense that whatever happened on Earth to prompt this perilous journey wasn't just the desire to explore space, but a necessity. Even though Alpha Centauri was made in a time when the planet was in a relative state of peace and prosperity if we ignore the whole Kosovo incident, it painted a very bleak view of the world. More importantly, it did it in a way that, in retrospect, seems almost prophetic. And I'll get into that in a moment. The basic idea of Alpha Centauri is that seven factions arrive on a distant planet and begin to colonize in the hopes of rebuilding the human race. These factions aren't divided by nationality, but by ideology. Each embodies a concept, an idea that the creators of the game try to present to the player. Militarism, religion, capitalism, and so on. They each have certain values, certain ways of thinking that are reflected in their diplomacy and in their gameplay. And it's partly through this that you get a sense of who they are, what they stand for. The other part comes from the research tree. All those historic codes found in civilization were replaced with a few passages from the works of philosophers, but more importantly, quotes from the leaders of each faction. You truly get a sense of who they are through these, of how their faction works, how they think. More importantly, you get the sense that they've lived through our present, or that the developers predicted the future when you hear about things that relate to the free flow of information, phrased in such a way that you can't help but think about things like PRISM, the giant mechanism used to spy on you at this very moment by a nation that would call itself civilized and modern, yet slips more and more toward totalitarianism. And then there are quotes like this. I sit in my cubicle, here on the mother world. When I die, they will put my body in a box and dispose of it in the cold ground. And in all the million ages to come, I will never breathe or laugh or twitch again. So won't you run and play with me here among the teeming mass of humanity? The universe has spared us this moment. Anonymous. Data links. That short passage has more power in it than most games have in their entire narrative. 
and Alpha Centauri is full of them, but they're never in your face, shouted at you, you're never forced to sit through them as though you're being lectured to or talked down to. That's one of the main failings of most games that try to be philosophical today, that try to have a point, that try to present an idea. They beat you over the head with it until you've lost all interest. One of the few other notable exceptions would probably be Bioshock. Alpha Centauri manages to be a game with a point to it because all those ideas and all that philosophy don't go against the story or the gameplay, they're part of it. They are merged on a fundamental level, producing a game that is truly amazing. One where you can feel that you are progressing through a story even if you were to skip all those quotes and never contact any other faction. That's because the world itself, the map, evolves as you play, both in accordance to the progression of time but also to your actions. Being a sentient alien environment, anything you do to it will change it, it may even anger it and the planet will rebel if you try to change it too far. It will grow hostile and can be dangerous until you either develop a more eco-friendly way of running your faction or develop advanced enough technology to dominate it, such as terraforming. Though at first it may just seem like it gives you the ability to plant farms and forests, Terraforming in Alpha Centauri is a very complex component because the planet itself is highly simulated. How so? To put it this way, if you raise a patch of land, increasing the elevation, you'll be blocking winds that bring clouds and precipitation, turning the area next to it into a more arid, less food generating place. Or you could just melt the polar ice caps and flood half the world. Though that does need a consensus from the other factions, it also needs coastal cities to be equipped for possible submergence. Apart from the fact that, from a narrative point of view, Alpha Centauri is one of the greatest games ever conceived by the human race, it also has great strategic gameplay. Large-scale management of cities, population control, research, resource management, and the occasional war. This honestly is probably where the weakest link in the game would be. It inherits some of the old flaws the old civilizations game had. Such as a city being unable to protect itself unless there is a unit parked in there or the huge unbearable amount of unit spam. And it adds a new one. The game has a unit designer that lets you create whatever you want using your own technology. The problem is that unlike something like Master of Orion or at least Space Empires, just about everything you can add is a direct numeric upgrade with very little variety to it. A few more alternatives like weapons that have different effects would have certainly helped. And while there are other features you can add to your units in the late game, for the most part you'll just be waiting for one more new weapon or the next level of armor before you commit to a prototype. Combat itself works just fine, you slam two units together and whichever has the better equipment, more experience and didn't attack previously in that round will win. A long time ago I said there was no hope of seeing a sequel for Alpha Centauri and honestly for the most part I was right. Civilization beyond Earth is a soulless husk that tries to imitate something it doesn't understand. Honestly, Pandora First Contact does a better job of being a sequel to Alpha Centauri even though that game probably had a budget that consists of about what the first 5 seconds of the On Earth's intro cost. But does it need a sequel? No, no it doesn't. It is a fantastic game as it is, still perfectly playable, a game that succeeds at being science fiction at its best and a medium where science fiction is usually just about blowing up space aliens. And it succeeds because science fiction is at its best not when it's filled with weird aliens and robots, but when it shows us how the human race reacts to those elements, to new ideas, to strange concepts. Much how horror isn't about how ugly a monster is, but about the dread that there may be a monster. You can find Alpha Centauri on GOG alongside its expansion, Alien Crossfire, which adds more factions, content and expands the story by showing you who was to blame for the planet being a bit like a sleeping god in the first place. I encourage you to play it and try to understand it you will have a better appreciation of narrative design in games after this. I guarantee it.
Thank you for watching this show. If you enjoyed it, please consider watching some of our other videos and maybe sharing them or giving a thumbs up if you feel like it. And if you really, really liked what you saw, please check out our Patreon page. For just $1 a month, you could help us make much better shows and get some rewards in the process. Or you could consider buying my book called Tale of Doom. Volume 1 is out now and available for just two dollars and as always if you thought it was horrible you know where to find me and complain about it